Hey everyone, it's Eric here from The Affix. Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's very, very cold. It's beginning in the, the teens out there and even single digits at night. Whew, man, we're not really used to that here. There was so much ice, I couldn't even open, <laughs> couldn't even open my car. I had to like chip it away before I could <laughs> open the car. I was like, oh man, I hope I don't break it. Yeah, that's good. At least I didn't break the door this morning. So all is well and dandy, right? So we have this. Um, this is the 16 inch 2023, this is A2780. So this has the M2 Pro, M2 Pro Max chip in it. Very heavy too, it's nice. And you have the Pro port, <laughs> which is the micro SD card slot because everyone needs that for sure. Especially if you're on a Pro device, uh, any type of editing, especially the software that Mac, that people use Macs for, it's usually good to have it. Thank goodness they brought it back, thank you. Thank you, we're tired of dongles, right? We're tired of it. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with this one. Um, it's no power. Let's plug it in, see what we get. I think we're getting like five volts, right? Each port, I think, let's see. So we have our USB-C tester and we see about five volts, 0.07 amps, 0.08 amps. Okay, I think that was the case for every single port, um, if I'm not mistaken. And it's good to measure that because if you measure that and you see something else going on, is this the right way? Oh, cool. So if you measure this and you see something else going on in different ports, um, they can indicate different things. So that's why we always like to check that um, but you do for these Macs, um, especially for these Macs, you have to have uh, all ports working for them to work. And well, and you might be asking yourself, well, why are you using USB-C? Why don't you just use the MagSafe uh, 3.0 connector, right? Why don't you just do that? Well, we can do that. And let's see what happens. Right, so this isn't gonna work either. And if anyone watched our other video, we put the video out there about MagSafe. Let's plug it. So this is the original AC adapter. We are getting a light. It's pretty dim, but it looks, I guess that's normal. Dim, it's pretty dim. It looks dimmer than normal, but mm, yeah, whatever. But it plugs in and it still isn't turning on. And that is because why? If you have um, a, a MagSafe 3, MagSafe 3, technically, if you look at a, a board view or any type of schematic, technically it's still considered USB-C charging. For these Macs, you have to have all ports working for this thing to power on. So if you have, um, not necessarily a damaged like port inside here, but inside there the chip um, has to be working. They all have to be working for it to power on. So let's go ahead, open up, take a look. Oh yeah, so satisfying every time. All right, so we have this. Man, what a nice looking machine inside. Always enjoy that, looking at this. Logic boards are always uh, very pretty, very aesthetic, very nice. We don't see anything obvious, do we? It looks like maybe this has been opened before. Um, the one, the well, two of the screws are actually on the bottom. They were a little bit stripped there too. So looks like someone tried to do something, but the coverings are pretty well over it. So probably nothing there. Um, we're gonna have to pop it anyway. We're gonna have to remove the board and see uh, further there because we don't notice anything uh, very obvious. So obviously it could spill. But anyways, you have to do any type of work. We have to check both sides of the board anyway, um, just to make sure if something's causing short and also put on thermal cam. So let's go ahead and do the journey of removing all these million screws and lots of connections that you guys don't have to endure. Okay, so pop it up, slip it over, and we don't see a problem. <laughs> so there's the board. Do we see anything? I don't see anything. No liquid spill, huh? So let's check the voltages now, and then um, both thermal cam and we'll also go under the microscope too, just to see if there's anything obvious there. So, so let's go ahead and um, let's go plug it in, just see if anything changed there. So we got our five volt, still got 0 0.07, 0 0.08 amps. Okay, let's check, let's see what does, let's see what's good with the thermal cam. So we're on the thermal cam. We're gonna go ahead and check this area. This is very close to where we plug in. If you see our USB-C is on the left there, and we see there is a house on the block that is on fire or the party's up. So it is blinking, it's bothering all the neighbors, and we're having an issue here. So you can see this one. Um, whenever we go into thermal cam, we see something like this. This is pretty much indicating that there's a short there on this uh, circuit, or especially where this uh, specific area is. Most likely it's some type of cap that's giving an issue. But the CD32 is also flickering a little bit if you see a little big square on the left there. Um, but let's go here. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at it, and we see the culprit. The culprit is 
oh man look at that it is just a cap it's pretty close to where you plug in the USB-C charging and we're going to show you something pretty cool this is like an old school method especially if you don't have like a thermal cam um, it's something that you can uh, find something that you can use that's pretty basic and you can use stuff like you know obviously this is alcohol that we're using and you have it plugged in and you can actually see it pulsing and what that's doing it's doing pretty much the same thing with the thermal cam is there's voltage going through it and it's indicating that there's a short there it's a really cool way especially if you don't have a thermal cam or if you're just looking for something you can feel with your hand if it gets warm if it doesn't get warm enough you can also just do something like this and you can find the short and it makes more sense because it's where the power is going in so it's usually a little bit easier to go ahead and take a look uh, to see that and we know it's on that circuit so what we're going to do of course we're just going to go ahead and remove it here we're going to add some flux we're going to go ahead and use some hot air and we see that there's other caps around this area so maybe it's a redundant type of capacitor which means um, maybe you can use you can just remove it and it'll be fine because for faults or anything you have multiple ones there but we always want to be safe especially for our customers too and obviously for warranties and stuff like that, we want stuff to work long term so we're gonna go ahead and replace that and make sure it's all good it looks to be fine there so let's go ahead and test it now all right so let's go ahead and uh, check it real quick See, my glove just ripped oh no exposed so plug it in got our 20 voltage and we got an apple logo all right All right, so it's powering on. Looks like it's going to the OS. Looks to be everything looks to be fine. We're getting our nice trackpad, and everything looks to be good. So I hope you guys enjoy watching. Oh man, my glove! Oh no! <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy watching this video on fixing the A2780 2023 16-inch MacBook Pro. This is the one with the M2 Pro chip in it uh, we did a repair for it we were able to find the fault and we were able to do a fix for it so if you guys enjoy watching this video please leave a like it really does help us a lot subscribe for more content we do lots of liquid spill repairs uh, macbook uh, logic board repairs as well we work on the latest and greatest this one's very very new so one of the latest models out there one of the more expensive models out there so we love doing repairs and also we do data recoveries for those as well if you guys are interested we actually have a mail-in service you guys can check out our website and we have all the links in the description below if you guys are interested in something like that we do also do data recoveries as well with hard drives we have lots of videos uh, on that but those for videos for another day but if you guys come back next time who knows data recovery macbook repair interesting stuff here. So hope you guys are watching. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.